Okay, Trooper Cody and Steve, we've made a few videos, we've been out riding all morning, we were doing the ride using Mac, my walk, so I know how far he's gone and what speed he's been doing it at, so he's done an outstanding job this morning, now he's done a fabulous job of doing videos, so I'm going to do a quick one, just a quick one about Wyatt Earp, now Wyatt Earp, everyone knows about him, they know about the OK Corral, they know stories about how he fell backwards in a chair and ever since that day he only ever put five rounds in his all sorts of stories about Wyatt Earp. Well here's the story about Wyatt Earp. I bet you didn't know. Be honest. So what happened is Wyatt Earp was the sheriff of Dodge. When he was the sheriff of Dodge a enormous gold deposit was found and a rush started for Deadwood what a great story that is about Custer and the American government and trying to force the Indians off their land. Anyway, let's just stick to White Earp and Deadwood. So when this rush breaks out, Wyatt finds that some of his deputies, Bat Masterson, they all say, stuff this for a lark. They probably didn't say that exactly, but in American ease, they said, bugger this for a lark, and they all headed off, quit their jobs and headed off for the gold field. Now, good old Wyatt, man of honour and integrity, had a contract, and he stayed there until his contract was finished. Now, when his contract was finished, it was a couple of months after the big rush when everyone had scooted off to Deadwood, but he still wanted to go and see what happened. So he was fairly well off. He'd been paid a lot of money for his arrests. I covered that in another video. He'd been, he, so he was very well off, and he bought the a team of four outstanding horses. He had the just brilliant horses for pulling a wagon. And he set up his wagon and he set off for Deadwood. He's halfway to Deadwood. I think it was around 700 miles. It was a long journey. He's halfway there and he bumps into Bat Masterson, who had quit in July to hoe off to Deadwood. Wyatt had stayed on until September to finish his contract. Halfway to Deadwood, Matt bumps into Bat Masterson, who tells him, don't bother going, mate. It's, there's no, it's not worth going. There's not a dollar to be found. All the claims have been taken. Now, Wyatt, maybe he was a stubborn man or a man that couldn't change, but he decided to keep going to Deadwood and find out for himself. When he got to Deadwood, what he realised was... Everything in Deadwood cost a fortune. It was so hard to get stuff there, Indians, weather, bad roads, inexistent roads, that everything cost a fortune. Food for the horses cost a fortune. No one in Deadwood had kept their horses. Winter was coming and everyone had sent their horses, mules, out of Deadwood, down to better pastures so that they didn't have to pay outrageous fees to feed their horses. Winter's coming to Deadwood. Ever seen photos of Deadwood in the heart of winter? Snow up to your armpits, snow up to the eaves. Wyatt Earp thought to himself, what about firewood? How is this town going to heat itself? So what he thought was, he would actually keep his four horses, he would pay the outrageous amount of money to feed his horses because he would charge outrageous sums of money for firewood. So what Wyatt found was that a local, a guy in Deadwood, had had an idea about cutting firewood. And this guy had cut wood three miles out of town and he had cut it into the, the wood into eight foot lengths and had left it all lying on the ground. Wyatt Earp got a contract for all of that man's wood that was lying on the ground three miles out. The lengths were already eight feet so if you have a bundle of logs four feet high by four feet wide with that eight foot length, that is known as a cord. That's what a cord is. 
without trying to make this too complicated, Wyatt Earp agreed to pay that man $2 a cord for his pre-cut wood. Wyatt then hired a man to work with him with his wagon and four horses and he would pay that man $2 a cord to help him transport the wood. Once back at Deadwood, Wyatt said no, no um, trimming the wood, no piling it up neatly. He would throw the wood in one, sp one spot, he would throw it out for $12 a cord. $2 to buy it, $2 for a worker, that left him $8 for every cord. He carried on his wagon two cords at a time and he made four to five trips a day. This is back in the days when blokes worked hard. For the whole of winter, Wyatt never took a day off, never took a Sunday off. He worked seven days a week from sunup past sundown, two cords a load, four or five cords a day, eight bucks a cord. You can do your own math. It was a huge, huge money spinner. Sometimes he would be asked to do a special load and there is one account of where a man had a very profitable poker game going in his hotel. He wanted to keep it going. He came and woke wired up in the early hours of the morning. He offered to pay $100 for one cord of wood and Wyatt woke up his employer, his, the guy that usually worked for $2 a cord, paid him $10, and in the night, in the snow, they went out, they got a cord, brought it back, and Wyatt got $100 for that. The end of that story, when winter was over, a few months really hard slog, and Wyatt had made $5,000 for his next endeavour. And of course, being the businessman that he was, over winter, a massive shipment of gold had built up in Deadwood, needed to be transported by Wells Fargo. Wyatt sold his wagon, sold his horses, and then got paid to be a guard on that Wells Fargo stage out of town. But all that's leading on to other stories. That's enough for now. The boy's been unbelievable. An afternoon of riding, sorry, a morning of riding and an afternoon of video making. You need to get yourself a better union, Cobber. Rightio, thank you.